Good, Good morning. morning. Since, Since we last met, met um, I think many of you know Loretta Gowan from our office, who's our resident, resident, resident historian. She's, she's unfortunately not, not here today, but I asked her the other day, and she told me that, that we've been having these in-person coordinators meetings for over 25 years. years. Some, Some of you, you maybe actually have, have been here for all of them. them. Um, but, but it's, it's really, really quite a legacy, legacy yeah, um, of, of coming together, together to support school-based school health centers, centers and, and I'm really excited to continue that legacy, legacy again today. today. Um, this, this is, is actually our first, first in-person in coordinators meeting since 2019. Um, um, I, think I think you can, can see here, here on, on the screen, screen our slide. slide. This, this is um, the, the best, best photo that, that we took from, from our meeting 2019, 2019 which, which is, is like, like everybody's, everybody's backs. backs. Um, so, so I think, I think uh, this, this year, year we're going to try and do a little bit of a better, better job taking photos, photos including, including right, right now for our 2024, 2024 slide deck. deck. Everybody smile. smile. I'm, I'm going to take a photo for our, our next, next year slide, slide deck, deck. So, so it doesn't, doesn't have, have to be everybody's, everybody's backs. backs. <laughs> see. So, so in, in all seriousness, so, so much has happened, happened since the last time we were together in 2019. In we know that the last four years, years have been incredibly challenging, challenging for folks working in school-based school -based health, health. From, from school, school closures, closures, staff burnout, turnover, turnover community tensions, tensions, high acuity patients, patients COVID, and wildfires. wildfires. You all have been through so much over the past four years. years. At the, At the same, same time, time, we know that, that you've all gone above and beyond, beyond to, meet to meet these challenges. challenges. That, that includes, includes everything, everything from vaccine, vaccine clinics, clinics, food pantries, wildfire recovery, student health advisory, advisory councils, councils, increased behavioral health support, support and, and so many, many more things. things. SBHC staff, staff have, have been on the front lines, lines of supporting young people, people and their families. And we're, we're so grateful for everything that you have done and continue to do. I just, I just want to highlight, highlight a couple of things, things. Um, a quick, quick, few quick, quick data, data points, points to illustrate the journey we've been, been on for the past four years. years. Um, um, this, this chart shows, shows total school-based school health center clients and visits from school years ending 2020, 2013 to 2023. Coincidentally, the amount of time that I've been with the school-based health center program. Um, and as and you can see, see visit and client counts count had been steadily rising until schools were closed in March of 2020. 2020. The documented encounters that we have were down um, in the years of 2020 to 2021 before shooting back up again, beginning in the 2021-2022 school year. And just to note, our total visits counts have nearly doubled since 2023. So the reach of school-based health centers has really expanded over the last 10 years. We also see this with behavioral visits and clients over the same time frame. This is uh, um, really also showing, showing the result of the investments, investments that the legislature, legislature and you all have been making in behavioral health services at school-based school -based centers. So one thing I take away from this overall client visit counts, counts as we begin to look at our 2022-2023 school year data is that SBHCs are continuing to do the work. Although this work may look different than it did in 2019, you all are seeing more young people than ever before and supporting them as we continue to navigate our changing world. And of, and of course, course these simple, simple graphs, graphs don't show all the things that you are doing. They don't come anywhere close to capturing the work that you do every day um, and the things that you do to support youth and their families in your communities. So I just want to start out by thanking you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for continuing to show up for your young people every day. And we are here to acknowledge the things that have happened over the past four years, but also to celebrate the amazing work that you do and, and have continued to do over the last four years. We want to create a space today to recognize the challenges that you all have faced and to um, also the innovative way that SBHCs are navigating these challenges. We also want to center the voices and needs of young people who are the reasons that we do the work that we do. Pass it over to the staff. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm Stephanie, Stephanie Murray. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the interim health systems manager in the adolescent and school health unit. Um, before I move on to some of our next slides, I wanted to take this opportunity to read um, a, a note that uh, Governor Kotek has sent specifically for this event. Um, we'll send out the full uh, declaration um, after the event, but here's um, an expert excerpt that I thought would be great for you all to hear. 
Thank you for the opportunity to share some thoughts and to celebrate the work you do. I'm excited for you that you could be back in person for this important annual event after four years. School-based health centers are near and dear to my heart. I know the work you do and you're an essential part of a system of healthcare access that supports the physical and mental health of Oregon students. Every time I'm in a community discussing education, student mental health comes up as a top local priority. Young people are handling a lot of trauma and SBHCs are trusted partners in helping them heal and be healthier. Thank you for the important work you do. I know how stressful the last few years have been for our schools and our healthcare providers. Please know that I see and recognize the resilience of SBHC staff and greatly appreciate the role you play in serving Oregon students. Have a great week, friends. Whoa, whoa. That's okay. okay. Um, so, so I'm going to highlight a little bit um, of our amazing staff that are here today. Many of these folks are very familiar to you. And I'm going to ask for the folks that are in the room if you wouldn't mind either raising your hand or standing up so that the folks know where you are here today and can come and say hi to you. So one of the biggest changes for folks who've worked um, with us for a long time is um, Rosalind Liu, who was our program manager, um, first as the school-based health center lead, then as our adolescent and school health manager, now has taken an interim position as our section manager. Um, so she is still available and around, but um, not as closely linked to our program. So uh, I have taken the interim position as our manager for this calendar year, um, so through June as I try to um, do some, some internal uh, work to get our new section manager. Kate O'Donnell um, is our SBHC program coordinator. Micah Rotman is our school mental health specialist. Melanie Peter is our school program specialist. And Huang Fan is our administrative specialist. Sarah Nimber is our school health epidemiologist. Loretta Galan, as you all know, is not here today, but is with us in spirit as our research analyst. Kavita Gaman is our research analyst. Rebecca Jacobs is our public health nurse. And Karen Ryan is also our public health nurse. We also are very grateful to be supported by our broader um, adolescent and school health staff here today. Wes Rivers is our um, policy and partnership manager. Alexis, Alexis Phillips, Phillips is joining, joining us online. online. She is our She's policy and assessment specialist. specialist. Lindsay, Lindsay Weaver is our sexual, sexual health, health program analyst. analyst. She'll, She'll be here later today. Corinna Brower is our state school nurse consultant. consultant. She'll, She'll also, also be here later today. today. And Callie Nichols, Nichols is our youth engagement coordinator. coordinator. I'm gonna hand it over to Lee. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go back, back a couple of slides and just go really quickly over today's agenda. agenda. So, so as I mentioned, this is our first, first in-person conference, conference in 2019. Uh, it's been a little bit of a learning curve to get back, back into the swing of things. things. So, so bear with us. us. Um, it's our intention to, to resume, resume these meetings in person uh, moving forward because we do believe this time in person is so valuable. Um, and I hope is to continue to move to build momentum with these meetings. Um, there's there's going to be, we're going to share our links to the evaluation surveys. Please, please, please give us feedback so that we can make these conferences better up for you in the future. Um, another thing just to mention is we consistently get feedback from folks that they want to have time to network and spend time together uh, when we gather in person. And so we really try to intentionally build this time into the agenda. Um, so you can see in your agendas and the one on the screen, we have... Um, some networking times. We have an activity that Melanie Potter is going to introduce um, for folks to get together and meet each other, um, especially if you're new to get to know folks, um, because this is the time we have in person to, to talk. And, and these are the folks who are doing the unique work of working in school-based health centers. 